Hi, everybody. Hope everyone's doing well. As promised, I just want to come on and do the question and answer video part two. I got so many good questions right before the holidays, and I answered as many as I could, but I felt the video was getting too long. So I wanted to come on today and do uh, do the second part and answer as many as I, I could do. Thank you very much for all your wonderful questions. I will do this again in the coming months. So if you didn't get to ask your question, um, yeah, you'll have another other opportunity when I post this again. So just bear with me. It's all on my computer. Okay. So the first question is from Tony, who asked me some really good questions before. So I'm just going to stick with his group of questions for a minute. Hey, Joseph, um, who sends us syn synchronistic numbers? And is there always a message behind, behind it when you see it? Um, I don't really know who sends us these numbers. Um, I, I do believe in synchronicity. Um, I think a lot of the times it's the universe. I think a lot of the times it's our energy that can sort of create that. Um, possibly it's also loved ones or the collective intelligence of the spirit world sort of just moving things into synchronicity for you that you'll notice them with numbers. Um, uh, yeah, it kind of depends what the numbers are. If you're talking about like 11, 11, so 11 after 11 o'clock, um, sometimes not to, not to be negative about it, but I think you can, you can sort of subconsciously know when it's 11 after 11 and you look at the clock then. So I think you, you sort of can, um, read into something that's not there maybe sometimes i'm really discerning so to me it has to be a real a, 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 like a number that i'm gonna there's no way i can miss that that sign like um like my birth date if i keep seeing it or a, a date of someone's passing that i know or um a number that i know has to do with a certain person's spirit then then i sort of will, will take notice of it but i think you always have to sometimes you know, a duck is just a duck, a cloud is just a cloud, a feather is just a feather, and it doesn't mean any more than that. But what I usually do with numbers or signs that I see, license plate numbers, um, and I know there's a there's a um, a message behind it, what I usually have to do is go back and think what I was, to try to remember what I was thinking um, right before I saw that that number or that series of numbers, and then I can kind of figure out what um they mean okay so yeah i do believe in, in synchronicity i do believe in synchronistic numbers and things like that but it really has to kind of hit me in the head to um to get my full attention but i'm like a proof is in the pudding sort of guy so um i don't know who sends them like i said i feel sometimes it can be the universe i feel sometimes we can create it by the power of our minds um but yeah if if it's a positive thing if you get positive um messages from it or a positive feeling from these these numbers or symbols go for it i think it's good okay so tony is second question from tony any recommended solo exercises to strengthen psychic abilities um yes not completely solo i do believe you need someone to sort of play with and work with but you can do them on your own if they if they um for example if if um you want to just work on a picture reading using your psychic senses. You can have someone send you a picture of someone living, and then you can just look at the picture, clear your mind, and just go into the energy of the picture and also the energy of who sent you the picture because you're also reading them, their um, impressions on this person in the image. And then you can start trying to flesh out how this person is in terms of personality, what's going on in their lives, where they live, are they married, are they single, do they have children, um, any challenges that they're going through right now. And then you write this all down and then you send it to the person who sent you the picture and you check it. The one thing I will say with picture readings like that, when you're, when you're working with someone who's living is you really should get the permission of the person in the picture before you send it to someone to read. It's, I just think it's, it's a respect thing. Um, you can also, also with a partner, um, you can have, you each can put like an image from a magazine or a regular picture in an envelope, seal the picture, and on the front of it, just mark it envelope number one, if it's your first try, um, and then the date, take the picture, take a picture of the envelope sealed, so you can't see what's inside. Um, and send it to the person that you're practicing with or have them send it to you. And same thing, just clear your mind, reach out and see if you can um, 
start to get impressions on what this image is in the envelope that's sealed. Um, the colors that it might have in it. Is it a horizontal image? Is it a vertical image? Are there people? Is it a, is it a scenic scape um, objects in it? And then you write that all down, send it to the person you're practicing with, and then um, you can check how you did. Um, what else can you do? You can do remote viewing. Yeah, all of these actually involve someone else, but you can practice, you can do it alone but you have to rely on someone else to, um, to really work with you. It could be remote though, low online or just by email. Um, you can do remote viewing, which is your, if you're working with, let's say you're working with Jane and Jane lives in Colorado and, and you're, I don't know, in Ohio. And you just sort of just tell Jane that you're going to try to link with her psychically to describe her house, right? So you would you would write it down or just tell her when you're working with her. Okay, so I saw as I walk in the front door, there's a picture on the wall of a horse, and as I walk through the the hallway, um, on the on the right on the right is um, your living room, and in the living room there are a lot of family pictures on on a fireplace on the mantel, and this the color scheme is beige or, or red. And as I go past the living room, there's a dining room on the left and then a bathroom. And you can kind of sort of psychically map out Jane's house. And then you ask her if you're right. And it, what, when you walked in is the living room on the right and is the dining room on the left or whatever. And you can see if you, um, you really picked up on that correctly. Um, what else can you do? What can you really do on your own? Um, so if you really don't want to work with anybody, if you just want to be really solo with the exercises, what you could do is a lot of times on the FBI website or missing persons website, missing persons and then solved, um, you can just look at the missing poster. So you look at the picture of the person who's missing and don't read anything. Don't read, oh, so-and-so went missing in the evening uh, in March, 2021, 2022, last seen here, or, or then if they were found alive or dead. Um, don't read any anything just look at the picture and just start writing this person went missing in an e in the evening and they um they had a heart condition and I, I feel that they were found alive in a different state or or tragically i found that they were they they were um they were found um dead in in a, in a park or in a field or in nature so just look at the picture and see what you're getting it's sort of psychic it is psychic to a point if the person has passed it sort of can become a mediumistic reading if the spirit of this person in, in the picture that is that was missing and now has passed they can actually start communicating with you but if you if you look at ones that you know missing persons and then found th these people are usually alive okay so you can th those are a few psychic exercises there are a lot of psychic exercises you can do um but those are just a few okay thank you tony any other questions i think tony had a few more um let's see again yeah tony sorry i'm just gonna finish tony's questions they, they were really good um why do a lot of people pass seem to pass in spirit in the final months days weeks of a year before new year commences that's an excellent question um i don't know i'm not sure how how spiritual that is um I, a lot of times i think people maybe will try to hold on to the end of the year or make it into the next year so it's a will of the mind and the body um i don't know it's a good question though if anyone anyone has any comments on that please let me know it's a really good question tony i always think it's it, i guess a lot of times when you're looking at the news and um a lot of celebrities or just well-known people um designers athletes whatever seem to pass at the end of the year maybe just because they're famous it's coming up in the news but i think well people pass every day um but a lot of people pass every day but it's more about um maybe that you it's just we're noticing these people because they're famous or, or or well known um but yeah i tend to think it if it's older people or people that are ill um I tend to think a lot of times they might want to try to hold on into into the next year. So it, people, you know, the mind and the body can be quite strong and the spirit. Um, so it's possibly that. A good question though. And please, if anyone has any uh, any any other ideas with that, that actually fascinates me. So let me know what you think. Okay. Also from Tony, will spirit still work on our mediumship connection 
during significant life challenges or will our abilities get affected? The spirit will work with you all the time. I think what's affecting um, your, medium, your mediumistic abilities is you. So if these, look, we always have challenges. That's, a, that's what the physical life is. It's challenges and it's opportunities to grow. So um, if you have challenges, just try to change your mindset with it. Instead of thinking, why is this happening to me? Think about how can I learn from this? What can I learn from this? And how can I improve and progress through this? Um, so I think if, if you feel like if you're just really having a hard time, which a lot of us do, um, and every, everything's really stressful and confusing. A lot of times in our minds, um, we can create this energy around us that it makes it harder for the spirit world to get through. It's, it's like a barrier we, we put up and just by our, our thoughts and our thoughts are energy. So that's what really affects the ability. The abilities really aren't getting affected. It's really, um, we're just blocking spirit influence. So if you can stay um, within this mindset that this is what life is, challenges do happen, what's the opportunity here to learn or to progress that can change your whole mindset. And then you can actually lean, lean, honestly, when I'm going through a hard time, when I'm going through challenges or I'm confused and not sure which way to go, that's really when I move closer to spirit. And that's really when I sit in the power more and just commune with the presence of the spirit world, my guides, or just the, the general um, energy of spirit. And that helps me. And I, I, I seem to, it, it becomes clearer. Things become, um, yeah, clearer to me, it, and I'm calmer because nothing really can come good. Can come nothing really good can come if you're in your mind and your mind is just you know spinning. And so I, I honestly, I try to stay out of my mind as much as I possibly can because it's really not a nice place to be. Okay, thank you, Tony. Really good questions. Let's see who else had questions here that I didn't get to last time. Um, okay, so here's one more question. Um, it's a long question, so I'm just going to paraphrase. I'm actually not going to use her name um, because there's some personal things here. Um, she, she mentions it, in the last video, I talked about my father coming through and how when my father comes through, um, it's never about, because I, I don't feel like I can communicate fully with my father. So if it's like someone I'm working with, someone who's taking a class with me or just wants to practice on me, um and my they bring my father through and they're talking about oh and your father's coming through what a lovely man he's he's just so proud of you and there's so much love coming from him immediately i say that's not my father so um a lot of times that it could be from the medium a novice medium where they just they want to do a good job and they want to make you feel good so they might really tell you things that you want to hear when my father comes through in spirit and he does quite a bit now it's it's always it, he's he always says i know that you want an apology but me coming is an apology so in my mind i'm like well that's not really an apology then but um he takes he definitely takes responsibility for his for his actions in in the physical realm um he definitely is regretful he definitely can see um the the far reaching um effects uh, the far reaching is far to call it, uh, what he affected in, in life with, with me, with my siblings. Sorry, I'm not phrasing that right. Like he, he definitely acknowledges it's like a throwing a pebble in a pond and his actions definitely ripple out and, and just affect a lot of people that were, um, you know, were in his life. So he takes credit for, for that. And he takes responsibility for um, things he didn't do well as, as, as a father. He wasn't a very good father. I didn't find um, anyway, I digress. So that's kind of what she's talking about. Um, um, acknowledge, yes. Yeah, so my father does not acknowledge really what he did wrong in in theory and in detail, but he does basically um, show regret. So um, you also so she wrote. You also wrote about adult children who don't want to speak with their mothers. I believe as you do that souls do some sort of review after they've passed. Yes, I do believe in that. And then they, they discover how their action, what, how their actions really um, affected a lot of people. I spent quite a bit of time with my mother after she died, trying to help in any way um, that I could, even though I was a child that she abused. Okay, I'm sorry to hear that. 
Um, now I find when I do practice sittings with people who are developing their abilities, she comes through every single time and basically says she did the best that she could, blah, blah, blah. Um, there doesn't seem to be any ownership at all. I'm not really terribly interested in hearing from her for that reason. I feel like she wastes my time with that stuff. I'd rather hear from someone who's thought about um, what they did during their life. Um, she passed about 20 years ago. I really don't think about her much. Um, and I kind of like it that way. Haha. <laughs> okay, good. Um, any thoughts on this? Um, I mean, I think if she's coming through and um, saying she did the best that she could, that is a level of an apology. I agree with you. It's not a full apology. And it doesn't seem like she's taking responsibility for it. But in a way, she's also in a, in a phase of healing in the spirit world. And so when she says she did the best that she could, that is sort of a doorway that she's understanding that she could have been a better mother. Um, so there is a bit of an ownership there. Um, you, look, it's all free will. You have the right to communicate with who you wish to communicate in spirit. You don't have to speak with any of your past loved ones, though I, my feeling is that she's going to keep coming until you listen to her and maybe she'll also shift um, her realization in spirit because they're still people they're still learning they're still progressing they're still growing they don't know everything in spirit they can see a bit further than we can um but you know they're still people they just don't have a physical form so you don't have to do anything you don't want to do the only thing i'll say to you is that when my father passed um i had i had two choices i could sorry this sounds really morbid and i don't mean it that way but it's really the way i think about it um i could spend the rest of my life with this 175 pound corpse on my back, just carrying him around, or I could just release everything, forgive him and move on. Um, because I do believe that the forgiveness we're giving for people living or past, um, it's for us, it's not for them, it's for us. And then we can move on. So when my father passed, when I heard about that my father had passed, because um, I had no connect, no contact with him for decades and decades, I knew that he had passed and I literally just lit a candle. And I said, I hope you're at peace. I don't understand why you did what you did. But for me, and hopefully for you, I forgive you. And I have to move on now. As soon as I did that, the moment I lit that candle and send that thought, sent that thought out, everything changed in my life. And I, I really credit that moment with the second spiritual awakening that I'm on now. Everything changed. My whole life changed. All of these behaviors that I, were so ingrained in me about being just an abandoned child, um, having this, this, this feeling, I'll show you, I'll prove to you, um, that really forced me down this road of just intense drive for my career, for success. And it really, I, I was driven by it. And as soon as that happened and he passed and I lit the candle and I sent those thoughts out, forgiving thoughts, it all switched and it moved me on to this spiritual path again that I'm on now. So all of these, these things that I was creating myself really just, just um, evaporated and I felt way better. Okay. So look, it's up to you what you choose to do when your mother comes through. Um, I would definitely give her forgiveness, but remember that forgiveness is for you. And I do believe that forgiveness and love is God and is the closest that we can get to God. Okay. Um, hope that helps. Uh, I'm sorry. I kind of went on um, my own little, my own little um, journey there in my story, but okay. Um, okay. The next question is from Pam. Uh, nothing is happening, exclamation point, exclamation point. Um, I'm waiting for clients and business to come, but there's no movement. What am I doing wrong? Well, I don't think you're doing anything wrong, but just this sort of attitude, nothing's happening, nothing's happening. I need things need to move, things need to move. Why is there no, are there no clients coming? Why isn't my business growing? All of these things create this, this stress and this panic in your mind, and then it makes it hard for the spirit world to work with you. Here's to do with clients and, and growing your business. Um, it's not up to you. It's up to spirit. This is all on spirit. It's time frame, not ours, which is horribly frustrating. I get it. But if you're working on your, on your connections, if you're developing, if you're practicing, if you're doing circles, 
um, and you feel you're ready for clients and no clients are coming, keep practicing, keep going, keep sitting in the power, keep communing with the spirit world. Just keep, keep yourself in the energy of the spirit and just, just keep going. Don't worry about it. Don't let your ego start to take over and say, oh, I'm not, why, are, why isn't anything happening? I'm ready. I'm so good. I need to make money. I need to do this because it's not, I, I don't feel to think about this um, in terms of a business, though I get it in certain aspects of definitely it's a business and you need to protect yourself, of course. Um, and you, you do need to make money. I understand that as well. But if you just think about this as a calling and a gift, a gift that not, not a, a gift that you're given so much, because I think this is an ability. It's not a gift, but the gift is really what we're giving back to spirit, to spirit world, God, and to humanity. We're giving this gift to help them all. And um, so, but Pam, don't, don't get frustrated. Don't worry about it. Just keep going. Keep sitting in the presence of the spirit and just allow them to develop you. Um, a lot of times I find, no, people say, no, I want to be an evidential medium. I want to be a platform medium, but spirit might have another plan for them. They really might want them to do healing and, and people are resisting the healing and, you know, it's all free will. You can do what you want. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do here in, in the physical realm, but I'd rather listen to spirit and let them inspire me and go the way they want me to go, because I know that's going to be the path of less resistance. But, um, if something's not working, just reach out and say, what would you have me do? spirit what would you have me do for you how can i be of service and just listen okay um so pam yeah don't don't get frustrated um but just think about what can you do to be of service and listen to it um next question from Lori. um hi joseph can you please explain how to open up and close down and also how to protect ourselves from dark entities well um, okay. Opening up and closing down, I really don't do. Um, well, okay, I guess that's not true, but not in the way I think you're 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 asking, Lori. Um for me, opening up is like maybe 10 minutes before um I have a class to do or um a reading to do or an assessment to do or a healing to do. I literally light a candle. Um, because that's usually where my eyes tend to focus on when I'm working. Um, I have some sage. I, I just like the smell of sage and I have a lot of it. Um, and I just, I stop and I, I just, I think about how lucky I am to be able to do this. How grateful I am to be of service and that spirit in some way, in some crazy roundabout way which took me from the left to the right of life and all over the place and now down all these paths that were all zigzagged and crossed and crazy landed me here they guided me here like how amazing that is that i got here and i can now help people and help the spirit world and also also helpfully hopefully um work with god to be of service to people and to help humanity how lucky I am. And that's kind of my opening up. And I just, I, and I just reach out to the spirit world and I just say, just use me friends, just use me. However you need to let, just help me help you, which I, I, I got from reading, um, help me help you is something I got from uh, a quote by Estelle Roberts, who was an amazing clairvoyant and healer and, and, and trans medium. Um, where she just talked about reaching out to the spirit world and reaching out to her friends in spirit and saying, help me help you friends, help me be that bridge, help me be that door um, to our world and let me help you and your, and your loved ones. Um, so I like that. So I use that a lot, help me help you. Um, that's my opening up. My closing down is, I think closing down really has to do with your relationship with the spirit world. Um, the spirit world know when I'm not working, I'm not working. Um, when I'm working, fine. You can, you can come, you can come through, you can, you can, you can visit me as much as you want, but when I'm not working, I'm off. So don't, you can maybe lightly inspire me if it's for my own development and my own progression, or um, if you inspire me just to write down a few words somewhere to come back to it when I'm, when I'm ready and when I'm working, fine, I'm fine with that, but I don't want, um, 
the spirit world around, like working with me all the time when I just want to like kick back and watch Netflix or go out to dinner. Okay. So I guess closing down, you have to decide, okay, so when I blow out my candle, when I'm done working, I'm off. Okay. That that's I'm off duty. So I don't want to really close down so much because I do like to get the light inspiration from the spirit world. I don't want to have them come and sort of push me to go to someone in a supermarket and ask them if their if their mother is dead and sort of like accost them. I don't you should never do that. You should never do kamikaze readings because it's incredibly disrespectful and it's sort of an assault. And nobody does that. It can happen on TV, but I don't even think that's real because you have to get their permission to get them on, on film and no one's going to waste film if they don't have their permission. Okay. So um, yeah, that's sort of like by opening up and closing down. I just think a lot of people will teach it. Well, you open up, you open up all your chakras and you align, you, you align your chakras and open them up and then you sit and you get the power and you light a candle and you meditate. It's like 20, 30 minutes are going by and there's a lot more I would want to do with my time. Um, in terms of closing down, no, I really, I don't. Like I said, I'll just, I'll, I'll blow up my candle. And that for me is uh, my sign and also the, the sign that I give the spirit world that, uh, that I'm off duty. Um, so I wouldn't worry about that. The last part of your question, um, for those of you who know me, I think you know how I'll answer this, how to protect ourselves from dark spirits. I don't deal with dark spirits or dark attachments or anything evil or negative. To me, my mindset is that anything that comes from the spirit world and from God is about love and it's about healing and it's all positive. There's enough negative aspects within this world and the physical world. I don't really have the time to worry worry about this from the spirit world because I don't really think it comes from spirit. I think anything dark or negative that comes from us. So I don't have anything to do with spirit rescue. I don't want anything to do with house cleansing or clearing. Um, I think you can do that on your own in terms of cleaning your house. I think that's usually just from energy, from mostly from living people. Um, but um, about removing dark attachments, removing dark entities, I, I don't believe in any of that. Um, I tend to think love attracts love, light attracts light, and that's really what I do. Um, and like I said, I think there's enough negativity in this world. I don't have to worry about that coming from the spirit world as well. And I've never had, um, I've never really had an experience with a dark spirit or a negative entity um, with all I've done. But I think you can call that in and I think you can actually manifest that. Um, I had a teacher once who said, obsession leads to possession. So I think you can obsess about something long enough and you can create it. I don't think it's real, but I think your mind can create it. Okay. Um, okay. So this question actually I really like from who's this from, from Bar Barbara. Um, I'm a little late coming to the party. I just turned 70 and I'm a bit embarrassed sitting in circles with people half my age. Um, I feel like I don't have the time and I'm very regretful that I didn't start this earlier. Is it worth it? When you feel you don't have the time, do you mean you don't have your time in, in your daily life or you feel like you don't have the time anymore because you're 70? I think that's what you mean. Um, look, you're, you're coming into this exactly when you're supposed to come into it. Perhaps in your 40s, 50s, and 60s, you weren't ready for this. Perhaps you didn't have the time in your life to deal with this. Maybe now you have more time. Maybe now you're more open. Maybe now you've, um, you've progressed further and it all makes sense to you. Um, maybe you had experiences that opened you up to this in the last few years. It's all normal. Don't worry about it. We're all, like I said before, when someone asked a question about um, not having clients or business, it's not on our time frame. It's on God and the spirit world's time frame. So you're exactly where you're supposed to be at this moment. Keep going. Keep going. You're 70. I don't feel 70 so old. You have a, another 15 to 20 years, if not more, to do things if you want to do with spirit. Don't worry about it. Be happy you actually are doing it as opposed to not doing it at all. Um, I understand what you're saying because I'll work with people. Uh, you know, I have the honor and pleasure of working with a lot of people. Some of them are in their 20s. And I look at them and, you know, first of all, I'm incredibly <laughs> envious of their, 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 their skin tone um, and the quality of their skin. And, um, but 
I know that when I was in my mid twenties, mid thirties, and even up until my early forties, I wasn't open to this. I was open to it, but um, I wasn't ready to do it. I thought I was, and then life got in the way. And like I mentioned with, you know, the stuff from my father, this, this drive to really just, I'll show you and really go on this money track and career track. Um, I wasn't open to it. So, I mean, I was always, always interested in, in spirituality and I was definitely a student of many, many religions um, because that interests me. But in terms of this awakening and being able to really work with the spirit world, I was ready when I was ready. Definitely there are times, like I said, where I was like, oh, I wish I would have started in, in my mid twenties, but I, I just, that wasn't my time. Now is the time for us. Don't worry about yesterday. I can't do anything about it, sorry. I'm so sorry I had a bit of a coughing fit, so I stopped the video. I'll, I'll paste these two parts together. Um, just to finish Barbara's question, I don't think 70 is too old. Um, I think you should be grateful that you um, you found this path now and just enjoy it. And you're exactly where you're supposed to be. So just go and, and you need to let all this go that you're too old, you don't have a lot of time left because who really knows how much time you have left. And even when you pass into spirit, you still have time. But just be grateful that you 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 reach this point. A lot of people don't ever, okay? So Barbara, keep going. I, I think it's great. I think it, it's a wonderful thing that you're doing this at this point. Um, okay, so last, yeah, basically last question. Um, I just, if I have a question about um, the phases of the moon and how it affects mediumship i've heard that um a full moon is a good time to do readings where a new moon is not um yeah i've heard that too i've heard that you you, sh you could map um the phases of the moon in correlation to how your readings are um and and they're they definitely they connect but to do that i think you need to take about six months and really go through each phase of the moon for, for six months and then do readings and really write down how these readings go. I kind of feel that's sort of like a formula for, for disaster in a way, because I, I know that I cannot um, plan my schedule by the phases of the moon, right? So if for some reason I do this and I find out that when, a, when there's a quarter moon or um, a, a new moon, my readings aren't as good um, or my, my, my relationship with the spirit world or, world or working with the spirit world isn't as clear um, with a certain phase of the moon. Um, I don't know what I would do about it. It's not like I can really plan my schedule by that. And then if I have readings planned and all of a sudden I look at the phases of the moon, the phases of the moon for that day. And I'm like, oh no, it's a, it's a, it's a quarter moon. It's a, it's a new moon. My readings are, are crap during that time. I'm setting, I'm setting myself up to fail even before I try. So um, it's an interesting concept. And I think it has to do with um, also the tides and water, which I've heard a lot about, but I really don't like to read so much into things like that because um I, I, nothing I can do about that. Nothing I can do where the moon is when I'm doing these readings. Um, and so I think you have to be careful with that. Um, but like I said, if you're really interested in that, just really take about half a year and really map out through the different phases of the moon during that time, how your readings went, right? And then you can see, but I, I don't know. It just seems like um, I tend to think I'm, I'm in control of... Um, my development in a way obviously the spirit world are, are definitely in control of, of my mediumship and, and my and my progression but I, I i have control about um how how much i can get myself out of the way and not worry about external things so much um and if i do then then things start to really spiral down so i don't really pay attention to things like that so much um in terms of astrology in general um i think look there if, if you're really interested in astrology go to a good trusted um positive astrologer have your your birth chart done with with all of your your with all of your stars and what you what connects to you and get a complete picture of um of of astrology for you 
Um, there are plenty of really good astrologers out there that I think will talk to you about the positives and neg negative aspects of where your where your birth chart is. I think that's what we are. We're we're positive and negative. We're light and dark. We're all of these things. So um, that's fine. But it, I find it. I guess what I'm trying to say is that if 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 you're really not looking at the whole science of astrology because that's what it is, and I find it fascinating. Um, but you're just looking at oh, it's a full moon and everyone's crazy during the full moon. And I don't like to do anything during a full moon. The energy is off the charts or, oh, Mercury is in retrograde and everything goes wrong. And um, the energy is just nuts and, and people are, like I said, crazy and all these things. You're really just looking at the negative aspects of, of this. And you're not, it's really, that's, that's not um, the science of astrology. That's just what you're reading in newspapers or online or, or people are posting about astrology about um mercury being in retrograde in the full moon and, and really just the negative parts of it so it, it's sort of like why would you just focus on like a complete subject and just look at the negative part of it right that nothing good is going to come from that so if you're really interested in this learn about astrology take an astrology class learn how to build a whole a whole a whole birth chart of star of, of the stars and and where your sign is or, or do it for people but if it's really just focusing on on the negative part of a, a part of it, that's not good, and I don't think that's helpful. So in, in that respect, I don't really pay too much attention to where the stars are, or where the sun is, or where the moon is in terms of my mediumship. I mean, I know my birth sign obviously, um, and I, I do feel there are certain signs that are, 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 are birth signs that are more sensitive than others. But that's just my opinion. I don't know. Um, so yeah, like I said, if it's something that really interests you. Um, you can definitely chart the phases of the moon and then see how your healing is, how your mediumship reading is, um, are, and um, and then you see, but I don't know. Okay, last question. Um, hi, Joseph, I know that you're a spiritualism book junkie. Yes, I am. Can't get enough. Can you give us two or three different books that have changed your life or um, have really helped you with your understanding of the spirit world and um, spirit in general? Um, yeah, if you is hard, there's so many. Um, okay. Um, anything by Arthur Finley, I find really good. Uh, for those of you who know, there's the Arthur Finley College. So it's, it's him. He was an amazing writer, an amazing researcher um, for the psychic arts. And um, really, there's a scientific level to what he did. That's good. He has a really good book called, I, th I think it's Age of the Etheric. That's really good because it talks about the, the, the workings of the spirit world. Um, I'm reading now, it's called The Psychic Stream, and it's literally like that thick. It's probably like um, over 2,000 pages and talks a lot about the different religions in terms of the spirit world. And um, that I love. It's going to take me, I'm sure, over a year to, to really read it fully, but I love it. Um, anything by Silver Birch is great. Um, and all of the Silver Birch teaching are still available. Um, Spiritual Truth Foundation in the UK, I believe. Um, I know they also sell them in the States. They have all the teachings of Silver Birch and any Silver Birch book you can you can have is, is great because you can keep reading it. And that's beautiful. Um, Red Cloud Speaks. Red Cloud was the spirit guide to um, Estelle Roberts. That's a really good book, really interesting teachings from Red Cloud. I love, um, what else? Um, Gordon Higginson's biography on the side of angels is beautiful, hard to get in the States. Um, you can get it definitely at Arthur Finley College in the bookstore at the SNU. But when they have it, get it. It was written, I know he approved it all and, and worked with the author, um, Gene Bassett. And I know that he approved the galleys, the proofs, and um, and he passed not long after that. So it's an interesting book about just his life as a young medium into a working medium into the president of the Spiritual Statue Union into running the Arthur Finley College um, and his his sort of his views on the spirit world and how the spirit world works. So that's a beautiful book. Yeah, there's so many. Um, you have to find what really resonates with you and um, and, and, and just keep reading them, keep going. And the more you read, the more books that are attracted to you, I find. The last book I, I, that I'll mention is um, William Stainton Moses, Spirit Teachings. That's really beautiful. It's, it's written through his hand. Um, so it's a trans-channeled automatic writing. 
And that's beautiful in terms of just teachings from the spirit world to us. So I'm going to keep going here. Um, W.T. Stead, there's a, there's a book. It, it actually encapsulates a, a few of his teach, a few of his books, um, the blue Island and other spirit teachings, I believe is the title. Um, and it, it has the blue Island, which is amazing. It has letters from Julia and one or two others. What I, what I like about this book is a W.T. Stead is, is amazing um to read his teachings but uh, letters from julia and maybe one other in this volume in this in this book of, of three or four different volumes um that those those books were written when he was alive um and the rest in the book blue island and i think um, spirit teachings from the spirit world something like that um that those were all written by W.T. Stead, but in spirit and through the hands or or the voice of, of mediums that were um, communicating with him. So that's fascinating to me. Okay, so there you go. Um, I do apologize for cutting this video at the end for my coughing attack, but I'll, I'll try to um, edit them as best that I can together when I post this. Thank you so much. And I look forward to, yeah, to hearing more questions in the future. Bye-bye.